Turbo frames versus turbo streams. What's the big difference? Find out in this video. So turbo frames, let's start with that. The frame itself lets you update a specific part of a page uh, without refreshing the page. So that's the magic behind it. You can kind of sectionize a piece of your HTML page, trigger a change in the back end or some sort of front end logic if you need to. And then based on a unique identifier, update that specific section of a page in real time. So it gives you that spa like you look and feel of a, a traditional server side rendered app like Rails. So Turbo itself is kind of a predecessor of the Turbo Links library, but they've added on the concept of frames and streams. And frames are pretty simple by example, but you can actually go quite far and have more advanced use cases that involves nested frames or updating specific parts of the page based on the frame or the link described. And it works by essentially hijacking the request and serving HTML over the wire that returns back targeting that unique identifier and then updating that part of the page. So it's kind of simple, but it also is a little convoluted as, as far as putting it to practice. So here's an example of it. We have a turbo frame tag with a post frame and then a do block. So you're rendering a frame with this handy helper from the rail side and then we're rendering a traditional post. So say it's on a post show page but you want to toggle between it. So typically in a tab environment, like a JavaScript tab or something, you would use, you know, HTML that's already just fed out and you're sh showing and hiding uh, panels based on, you know, whatever tab you're targeting. In this world, you're actually loading frame content based on that target. So you can actually load another page into that frame and display it like a tab. So it takes on a different kind of paradigm in your mind, but the actual end results quite nice. You're able to piecemeal things out and also target them directly using say these post links and then appending a data tag that has a turbo frame target on it. And you're able to target, target that specific frame on the page and update the contents of the link that was serving the page on the other end. So that's a lot of mouth words and stuff, but hopefully that makes sense. So when you're linking to that one-off page, whether it's the independent post page or a edit page or a new post page, you can actually just inject that HTML content on that other page into this frame. So that's the big advantage of frames. So an advanced usage might be something like having a container that's a frame and then within that might be a panel, maybe it's a flyout panel and you can have that panel come into the page, update things while the container's updating things at the same time. So you're able to do this real kind of um, limbo effect, but also kind of make it real unique and very interactive, all while being just H basic HTML and some JavaScript that's behind the scenes. So Turbo kind of takes care of a lot of that. Where would you make use of Turbo frames particularly? Honestly, they could be used anywhere. And I've found myself that it's commonly easy to do overdo it, so to speak. But if you need some sort of use case where things need to update in real time, or you need to update details of, um, content that might make sense to have the user who's just browsing the page see it see it happen you could do that with turbo frames as well as streams which we'll get to in a second but e-commerce websites are pretty good use cases for this so like say a shopping cart maybe you add something to a cart the account needs to update that's a good use case uh, reviews shopping cart additions uh, and then product details maybe you have tabs on that or images or whatever you want to serve in and now based on different pages or criteria you have on the back end that might be on other pages but you can just load it into the view based on linking to it so it's kind of a nice way to go about it and it offers a lot of uh, organizational practical things so you could have your app built a certain way but still you know kind of have things in and spread around but still able to kind of have some familiarity with the conventions of Rails specifically. Uh, but this works in other environments too. You can use Turbo on like Laravel apps, any other kind of server-side app or some sort of structure that way. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, dashboards might be a good thing as another example. So some sort of widget charts that could be updating without reloading the whole page. And of course, forms. So if Turbo by default's kind of baked into Rails forms. So you can submit the form. It doesn't actually like redirect like it traditionally does with Rails. So instead it injects some sort of response if you want to do it in the, tur the Turbo way. And then you could target 
immediate feedback to the user. So in, say there's an error state or something, you can re-render that form in that same frame to showcase the errors in real time instead of having to, them to you know, hijack, redirect to another page, and then just have um, just that big rebound effect that you're commonly used to when you have to go to another page. So it's a little, little uh, quality of life improvements, but it is kind of a unique paradigm when it comes to putting it to practice. Turbo streams. So these could be used in a lot of variety of places as well, just like turbo frames. Commonly they're used together, to be honest. So streams are great to provide real-time updates. So something like a chat application or some sort of notification framework, something like that, where you want to get the real-time effect. Um, two users could be on opposite ends of the world, open up a similar app, uh, be inside of different accounts, but still render like updated comment lists or reviews, kinds of UI with that in mind. So it's kind of a way to just go ahead and hook into the nature of uh, web sockets underneath, uh, as well as the action cable framework I think is involved and render those updates in real time. And you're able to dispatch those, broadcast those updates is commonly the, the name they give it. And you can hook into that and r render the UI and update it in real time. So you, and while doing that, when you're updating the UI, you're usually targeting it with a turbo frame. So that's kind of where they, they meet. So for a turbo stream, let's say you have a chat app and you have this new messages that once that's going to appear to users in real time, you could have a div with an ID of messages. So something unique in that case. Inside, you'll render the messages like as a collection in Rails, maybe, or some other app, whatever you're using. It doesn't have to be Rails, but it's common to have this in Rails apps. Then you'll need to stream from a certain chat uh, ID. And then within that, you can have a create uh, turbo stream file. So create.turbostream.erb. Inside of it, it can have an append action, which is a stream response. So think of those as JavaScript events, essentially. So almost like matching the JavaScript world with these named helpers that essentially do the same thing. Um, it's just kind of extracted away and you get to write Ruby instead of JavaScript. And then you'll render that same message. So when you do create, it posts that create action to your app. Um, typically a create response in a Rails app, it's gonna go to a post um, HTTP response and that will return this streamed object that's gonna be your new message and you can update the messages ID, which we have the ID of messages. And since we're using the append keyword, we're able to just add that message to the stack. So then you'll have this new UI of a new message in place. So that's all traditional stream. It's just a way you could do it with basic streams, but if you want to broadcast the changes, which is a little advanced step of streams, you can have that chat ID and turbo stream from helper. And that's able to just kind of just on opposite ends of the world, like I said, two users can see that update in real time instead of just that local that, that environment that you're in. So that gives that unique presence of the UX to just kind of scale. And it's pretty cool when you see it in action, you can open up two browsers, one incognito, one traditional, maybe add a new chat message and it pops up over here at the same time over here. So that web, web sockets are in play with that. So streams kind of have that real time capability. That's kind of the takeaway I would say. Um, t as opposed to turbo frames. So that's a, a unique way to go about it. Turbo streams can do a lot more than pen though. You could do something like replacing a message. So say you want to update it in real time. Maybe there's an edit button in that in a turbo frame tag. You can do a combination and within that button, you can target a certain frame. So say our message in this case, you'd have a unique identifier to that specific message. And it's got maybe message underscore its ID and then hit that edit link, that link will load the edit page and new up the instance of that particular post in this case, or maybe it's a message in this instance. And you can edit it like right in place. So it renders say that form right then and there. So it's pretty neat. Uh, so this is an example, you could use that replace action. You could use a pen, you could, uh, there's an update action. I think there's a ton more now. It could be anywhere, but think real time updates. So mostly like, as an example, live sports scores. So something like you have like a ticker on your website or something with sports or stats, something like that. Maybe it's stock prices, something of that nature. You can have just updating, maybe a background jobs running to, um, you know, fetch an IP API that will trigger an update to load that every minute or I don't know, hour, who knows, whatever you want to do. And uh, project management tools, I think in the main, um, there's another version of this where it's turbo refreshes. 
uh, which is called um, morphing, which isn't in this article. I'll do, I did an article on that or a, a video of that on another video. So check that one out. But this is kind of that similar model where you can actually uh, see updates in real time between users. Maybe they change the status of something on a project management tool, or if it's a Kanban board, maybe you moved a card, you'll see it update in real time. Someone's moved it if it's a shared environment, of course. Cool ways to make use of this streaming function where you can really hook into broadcasting updates for the, the masses, essentially. Uh, the key differences, so let's go over those. So the scope of updates would include frames update specific sections of a page. So turbo streams would broadcast those updates to multiple clients. So that's the difference there. So you could think of frames as sectioning out specific content and targeting it where frames could kind of hook into that update that real time and just kind of do the same thing. So it's kind of a, you're adding on to the, the frame with a stream. It's confusing to talk about, I know, but hopefully it's clear, maybe making a little more sense as this video goes on. So use cases, TurboFrames are great for navigation and partial updates, um, page reloads, so something of that nature. And streams are perfect for real-time updates, like I've been saying, or collaborative kind of environments. So anything project management heavy with Teams or chat applications, uh, notifications between different people, any of that structure could make sense. So turbo frames make use of HTML elements, which is like a turbo frame tag, it's kind of an invented element. I think it's a web component. I could be wrong about that, but you would use these data attributes uh, that essentially say data turbo something to kind of add to those. And streams typically need a server side response to be broadcastable. So you'd need something on either your controller or your model, even in a job, you can trigger it based on the class and the client would need a subscription to that trigger. So you typically have something say in a model where it's broadcast to post or whatever. And then in your view, you would want to subscribe to that broadcast. So you'd render that turbo stream from post, something like that. So more use cases and in scenarios, if this is helpful. So um, for turbo frames, I commonly use them for navigational components like paginated content or tabs. So you could use that in exchange for actual JavaScript driven tabs. Use that quite a bit nowadays. Form submissions are kind of a given. So with Rails in particular, they come by default now. So you'd have frames typically just updating in real time. You'd have that just built into the form object that you're, you're creating. Content loading in specific sections without disrupting the user experience is pretty common. Uh, streams will typically excel, again, in real-time collaborative environments with multiple users who need updates to pages that relate to them or their, their team. So again, ch chat applications, collaborative editing, and notifications are pretty big use cases there. So they each have their own strengths. Hopefully this video cleared up some you know differences between them. You can get used to it. A part of Turbo is actually three components. It's Drive, it's Turbo frames and it's turbo streams. Kind of hard to understand on the surface, but as you get into the nitty gritty and put it to practice, you're gonna learn real quick what each means and understand when to reach for one or the other. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Hello Hotwire is a free course geared toward building Ruby on Rails apps with Hotwire from the ground up. Visit hellohotwire.com to learn more.